Welcome to the Blood Component Therapy uh, Content Review course by Nursing World Nigeria. Uh, for our courses, we usually start with uh, a quiz where we want to practice using the decision tree. A client has received two units of whole blood today following an episode of GI bleeding. Which of the following lab reports would a nurse monitor most closely? Okay, so if you use your decision tree, you know this is an evaluation question. You go straight to step one and step five and uh, evaluate your answers. You must have determined your topic, which should be a post transfusion lab results. Okay, so if we evaluate our answers, um, okay, so bleeding time, would that be? Would we need to monitor this post-transfusion? Well, we might not need to monitor this post-transfusion. Okay, how about hemoglobin and hematocrits? Well, we know that post-transfusion hematocrit uh, provides immediate information about red blood cell replacement and uh, in case there's continued blood loss. So you want to keep that. How about white blood cells? We need to monitor this post-transfusion. No, it's not the most important and platelets, we can also rule that out. So answer option B is our best answer choice. So let's look at uh, what we need if we want to carry out uh, a transfusion, what equipment, you need your blood or blood products, you need uh, tubing with filter. You also need a 19 gauge needle for venous access. Again, you want to ask your client if he has any allergies or if he's had any previous blood transfusions or reactions. So what reactions could we have? What blood products are there? What is your nursing considerations for these uh, blood products? Okay, so for packed red blood cells, uh, usually there's going to be a reaction. It's going to be, uh, it's, it's less common with packed red blood cells um, your nursing concentration, you must always have your companion solution, which is your normal saline. Again, you want to monitor client during transfusion. You also want to use a standard blood filter. And again, always squeeze the bag to mix the cells every 20 to 30 minutes and give over two to four hours. So this is very important. You want to give over two to four hours. Okay, for platelets, you could see some febrile reactions. And uh, again, you want to have your companion solution of normal saline. You also want to use a non-wettable filter. And in this, you want to give as quickly as possible for platelets. You want to give as quickly as possible four units per hour. For plasma, um, for albumin, you, there's a risk for circulatory overload, okay? So you want to administer your plasma with a straight line set, also give as quickly as possible because the coagulation factors become unstable. Again, for albumin, you want to use, it usually comes in an administrative administration set. So you want to use that and give at one meal per minute. You also want to give as quickly as possible if the client is in shock. For prothrombin, the hepatitis risk is greater down with whole blood. There could also be allergic and a febrile reaction. And for factor eight, there could also be allergic and febrile reaction. Uh, use the component drip set or syringe when you are transfusing. Again, you want to type and cross match blood. Why do you want to do this? Because you want to ensure that the donor's blood and the recipient's blood are compatible. When we talk about compatibility, you're looking at uh, uh, considering the blood group. Remember, O can act as a universal donor, but can only receive from O because it doesn't have any of the A or B antigens. So that's why it cannot receive from any other blood group. But for A, it can give to A and also donate to AB because AB already has the A antigen, so there's not gonna be any reaction. But A can only receive from O and A. Likewise, for blood group B, can donate to B, AB, but can only receive from O and B. 
And again, for blood group AB, they can act as a donor to AB, but can receive from everybody. So it's a universal recipient. Again, before you give blood, you want to check for bubbles, for dark color or cloudiness. And two nurses must check before you start your transfusion. What are you checking for? You're looking at the healthcare provider's order. You're looking at the confirming the client's identity. You want to look at the, the patient's armband, his ID to confirm his name and number. Again, you want to confirm the blood components you are transfusing. Look at the tag, name, and number. And again, you're looking at the blood type. You want to check your patient's baseline vital signs, including the patient's temperature. So what is our procedure with blood transfusion? Like we said, you want to start with normal saline. And again, you want to run the blood slowly for 15 minutes. This is very important. 15 minutes, that's how slow you want to run the blood. For the first 15 minutes, you want to run the blood slowly, okay? And then you want to stay with the client for the first 15 to 30 minutes after the blood starts. And you keep rechecking vital signs every 15 minutes after the infusion has started. If there's no reaction, no effect, then you can go ahead and increase the rate. And the blood should be infused in two hours for each unit. Obtain vital signs every hour until you've completed. Then you can subsequently check vitals every hourly for the next three hours. In elderly clients, you want to check vital signs every 15 minutes throughout the transfusion. And you want to infuse it as a slower rate at about uh, maybe over three to four hours. Again, you want your client, educate your client and inform him any itching or flank pain over the kidneys, he, he needs to report that. And again, you need to change the entire IV line for each unit of blood. The entire set has to go. Okay, one more quiz. The nurse is caring for a client receiving a blood transfusion who develops urticaria one hour, one and a half hour after the transfusion has begun. What is the first action the nurse should take? Again, using your decision tree, there's a priority question. We've known our topic. Uh, we'll go to step two. Uh, is this an assessment or implementation? It's an imp implementation uh, question. Okay, we'll go to step three. Physical or psychosocial? Uh, so this physical, uh, B is also physical. Uh, take vital signs, observe for further deterioration. Uh, this is also physical, administer. So these are all physical answer choices. Uh, then we'll go to ABCs. Which of them are they related to ABCs? Airway, breathing, circulation, and all of that. Okay, so uh, stop the infusion. So this could be related to C. Slow the infusion rate, C. Take the vital signs and observe for further deterioration. Uh, well, it could be related to C, but how about this? So this is not ABC, so we can rule this out. And then we can evaluate because we cannot uh, eliminate because all of the remaining answer choices are circulatory answer choices. So let's evaluate our uh, answer option choices that are left. So from what we've already discussed, we don't need to go far. You know, you need to stop the infusion. Uticaria is an indication of an allergy to the uh, plasma protein. And your priority action would be to stop the infusion. So that's your decision three at work there again. Okay, so let's look at blood transfusion reaction. Remember, if transfusion reaction is suspected, you want to stop blood or blood products. Again, you want to restart normal saline, save the blood container and tubing, and return to the blood bank. You want to drop blood sample for plasma, hemoglobin, culture, retyping. You might also need to collect urine sample and send to the lab for hemoglobin determination also. And again, monitor voiding. You're looking out for signs of uh, hematuria. So what are the types of reactions that we could have? 
remember in all of this, you would notice stop the blood, stop the blood, stop the blood, stop the blood, and again, slow or discontinue transfusion. So that tells you that's your priority loss in action for any adverse reaction. So we could have allergic reaction, hypersensitivity that could be caused by uh, hypersensitivity to antibodies in the donor blood. And it usually occurs immediately or within 24 hours. You will see symptoms such as uh, urticaria, itching, flushing. So those are mild symptoms. But in anaphylaxis, there's going to be hypotension, difficulty breathing, decreased oxygen saturation, and flushing of the skin. So some of your nursing considerations would include prevention. How do you prevent this? You can give the patient antihistamine before you begin the infusion. Again, you want to stop the blood, restart your normal saline, notify the healthcare provider. And then we can give supportive care like uh, diphenhydramine, uh, oxygen, corticosteroids. Okay, for acute intravascular hemolytic reaction, it's usually caused by incompatibility. Uh, this would occur within minutes to 24 hours. And you will see symptoms such as nausea, chills, vomiting. Uh, there's always pain in the lower back, low blood pressure, hypotension. There is an increase in pulse rate, decrease in urinary output, and hematuria. Again, you want to stop the blood and give supportive care. In febrile non-hemolytic reaction, which is usually the most common reaction you would see, uh, it's, it's as a result of antibodies to donor platelets or leukocytes. Again, you want to stop the blood, give supportive care. We can give antipyretics. Uh, avoid aspirin in thrombocytopenic clients. And it's usually seen with clients after multiple transfusion. So again, your febrile non-hemolytic reactions, these are called in minutes to hours. And a core symptom you will see is a fever and the chills, nausea, headache, flushing, tachycardia, palpitations. Okay, another type of reaction will be septic reaction. Uh, when you give contaminated blood products, and it can occur within minutes to less than 24 hours. Again, you will see tachycardia, hypotension, high fever, chills. The patient could also go into shock. So you want to stop the blood, obtain blood culture, and then we need to give antibiotics, IV fluids, vasopressors, and also your steroids. And the last but not the least would be circulatory overload. Yeah, yeah, a patient is given large fluid volume over a very short period, and this could occur within minutes to hours. So when there's that circulatory overload, you're going to have difficulty breathing. If you're listening to long sounds, you're going to hear crackles. There's increased respiratory rate, and you also see the patient with uh, going into tachycardia. So again, this is uh, most common in elderly clients. So you need to monitor clients that are at high risk, clients with heart disease, and also in children. And again, you want to slow the infusion or you just want to discontinue it outrightly. And again, the last but not the least, autologous transfusion. Usually it is done preoperatively where the patient donates blood, which would be used uh, after surgery, so or if need be. So preoperative donation collected four to six weeks before surgery. And some of the benefits include uh, you can prevent viral infection that could be gotten from uh, donated blood from outside. And it's usually used for clients with history of transfusion reaction or those that have a rare blood type, but it's contraindicated in acute infections, chronic disease, if the patient has hemoglobin less than 11 grams per liter or a hematocrit less than 33%, this is contraindicated. It's also contraindicated in cerebrovascular and cardiovascular diseases. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you in our next course.